Here's a new MediaTek 10 nanometers. This is the MediaTek X30. Uh, partnership with TSMC, they're doing 10 nanometer, uh, which is a uh, crazy cool uh, multimedia powerhouse. It does all kinds of 4K. It's a tri-cluster, 10 core. All right, so let's check it out here at the booth. So hello. Hi, I'm Wendy. Hi. From MediaTek. And uh, there I'm you have the X30 in oh. an actual uh, prototype phone right here. Yep. So it's actually running in there and it works. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to show you um, X30's great thermal performance. So right here you're comparing with the uh, Samsung S7? Yes. So right here it's a, it's a live demo and we're auto running a browsing. So we can see that the thermal performance is exceptionally good on the X30. So it's just cold. You can, There's so no heat. This has been running on here since, you know, it's been for running for like three or four hours already. And you can see that our X30 performance is, thermal performance is at 35, point, you know, 35 degrees versus our competitor is at 40 degrees. 35 is like a temperature of a human kind of, it's not too hot yeah. at yeah. all. It's going to yeah. be fine. It's, it's not going to yeah. explode like it's, Samsung. It's great for it's yeah it's 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 great. We got really good because of our Core Pilot 4.0 technology that's on the X30. Um, that's why we have great thermal performance. So yeah, what is this so showing here? So this is showing. Uh, so this is something we pre-recorded. So elephant stress is a, is a benchmark. So we're, we're basically saying that um, we have better benchmark scores. You can see that we have great benchmark scores, yet um, we have very excellent thermal performance as well. Um, so in terms of different apps, browsing, um, so you can see how... How great is the, perform uh, the benchmark score? Is it the best on the market? Yeah, but we, we, well, we compare with the uh, competitor flagship, so it's, so it's great. So what's the cores you have? Is it A72 Dual? Uh, A73 73, Dual? So two, two A73s, um, 453s, and 435s. So this 53 and 35? Yeah, so it's a th uh, tri-cluster, 10 nanometer, 10 cores. Cool. Um, and now I'm going to show you a low-power performance. So, um, our, so you can see here that this is running. This is running the browsing app, um, and you can see that in terms of when we run browser, you know, Facebook, Navigator, and gaming, we have we have a great power with Delta game. So in terms of us versus competitors. Um, when we do a browser, you know, we're only using the power consumption is only 400 something uh, milliamps, while our competitor is at over a thousand milliamps. So basically, uh, over 50, around 50 percent of power delta gain in, on these apps. So all this is, you know, based is because of our core pilot technology, and our core pilot 4.0 technology is the newest. Um, our previous generation, the X20 chipset, is running on the Core Pilot 3.0, and now we're running on the Core Pilot 4.0 technology. So that's why it's giving all this great sustainable and low power performance. Core Pilot 4.0. Uh, and what is the Core Pilot? So Core Pilot 4.0, basically, um, we have a very intelligent task scheduling system. Um, so that, that, that intelligent task scheduler basically determines when when a, when a task comes in it determines how much how big of a loading it needs uh, how 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 much uh, power it needs and because we've got the tri cluster um, technology going on um, it will determine say this load requires um, mid cores or lower cores only then it'll it'll actually designate the correct cores so when our competitors have only large and smaller cores um, it uh, maybe there's some wastage in terms of in certain terms of um, power on um, cores used so you have very smart algorithms yeah and uh you can do the same performance as a half the power. What does it mean? Compa what's the competitor? You yeah. Don't say so basically, like here we're so running Samsung. We're running navigation right here. Yeah. And when we're running navigation. This, so this is recording this live. It's live recording. We're running navigation right here. And navigation, um, you can see that it's actually it's using 382.4 milliamps, while our competitor um, it has consumed 935 milliamps. So the delta is actually 59 percent. So we we were. We're 60% lower in terms of power consumption right up for that app. So, um, would you say that the, the tri cluster, the Deca Core formula, is really paying off? It really yes. makes sense. Yes, definitely. Um, it really helps. Yes, um, in terms of thermal management, low power performance, and uh, and also powering all our multimedia. But it's a lot to do with 10 nanometers, also, right? As well, definitely. That definitely does play a part as well. 
Um, so you know, it's great that we have 10 nanometer, 10 core, tri-cluster technology, all playing part to make this a really great platform. Um, and over here? Not only on these apps, we were saving power, we also, uh, we also specifically, say, specifically yeah. save power for gaming as well. So you can see that we have an intelligent power saver here. And on this intelligent power saver, so here we have a side-by-side uh, -side comparison of this power saver technology on versus off, right? So when the power saving uh, technology is on, um, you can see that um, when we're running these games, again, we have, when it's, when it's off, it has, it's, you know, it's consuming 229.98 milliamps. When it's on, it's actually consuming 30% less power. Um, so so it, it, it can uh, optimize the game based on what's happening inside the game. Exactly, yeah. So, so that's, so basically, we're saving power um, at the PCB level, and also, and on, on terms of different apps, we're saving on all these social media apps, most commonly used apps, plus gaming, and also on the screen. So basically, one of the most, so one of the most power-consuming, power-consuming things on a phone is the PCB and the the, the, the screen. Yeah. So so basically, exactly. So we also have to. As well. So, what are we looking at here? So, we're looking at here is um, energy smart screen. Is it an OLED? Because it says uh, it works for both LCD and OLED, uh, but this is on the LCD. Um, so, I'll show you here that. So, energy smart screen. Here we have you can. So here we, I have an on and off toggle. So, so if I if, <laughs> if I have if I toggle this on, right? Then we have this is a live power meter. Right? See, once it's powered on, you can see that the the power meter is measuring that the power consumption is dropping dramatically. So basically, and you smartly can use less brightness. Yeah. Um, um, we can use we um, actually it's based on the content. We determine how much how bright well, our display is going to show. And it doesn't look like it's blinking, right? No, of course it's not. Be it's very... basically the it's basically the same visual experience with less power. Consumption. So, okay, let me toggle again. So this is on, now I toggle off. So when I toggle off, you can see here, when you come back to the to this parameter that's that's measuring, you can see that it's automatically going up. So this is live. Nice. So this is um, both LCD and OLED. Yeah. And now, it's included with your chip. Yeah. Now we can show you something more. Let's talk about right. multimedia. So maybe I can get Ryan. Ryan, talk about dual camera. All right. Oh, okay. So let's talk about dual camera zoom. So we're comparing with an iPhone 7, and basically it's two times optical zoom. And we have and when we zoom up to 10 times, yeah. you can see that. Look, I mean, look at the big difference. Um, look at all the noise. Look at the noise that you can see on on the iPhone. But it's not. Uh, it's because you have dual cameras. No. No, this is a. This they, also is a yeah, they also have dual camera. Yeah, they also have dual camera. And so it's basically, we have this is the Imagic 2.0 ISP. And so we have very crisp images. Um, That's and very it's great cool. noise reduction. Um, wow. Okay. That's cool. And now we can show you um, Instant AE. So here we're comparing um, the X30. The X30, oh sorry, we're going to toggle. Yeah. So, what is in there? Switch. It's, a, it's an on and off switch. So basically, we're, we're basically simulating that when you, um, that we can auto adjust to auto exposure really, really quickly. Oh, nice. So, so, so when we switch on, you can see that the X30 inside is the quickest in responding to the lighting nice. differences. Nice, all right. Okay, finally. I HDR. HDR. So this is the X30 and this is the iPhone 7. So this is a 4K HDR ready. Yeah, basically, yeah, this is 4K HDR ready. So you need a 4K HDR display? So this is, no, I mean, no, basically, yes, this is, this is basically saying that we, um, we can, we're the world's first to decode, to be able to decode. Um, 4K HDR on a software, um, on hardware. So we have a hardware that's dedicated to decoding 4K HDR. I think competitors use it um, on software-based, so it's more power-consuming. 
So you do it hardware accelerated 4K HDR and phone. Yeah. So basically, now that you you know you have a lot of content that's already 4K ready, 4K HDR ready, and now you can actually view it on your on your smartphone with you know obviously with the right display and so with the right. LG or Huawei or some other guys talk about HDR phone and software. Yeah, when they're talking about 4K HDR um, playback, yes, that, that's software. I mean, you can see the big difference here. So, like for example, this is this we we put this is uh, um, iPhone, and when iPhone is, you can see the, the differences. So basically, because iPhone doesn't support HDR content. Yeah. iPhone is only SDR. All right. Yeah. And then there's a lot of other stuff over here. Is Does that have anything to do with X30, all this stuff? This is 5G, yeah. is going to be supported in X30, and 28 gigahertz. Uh, and wave. It's all the, some other stuff that's coming with MediaTek. And uh, then there's also IoT. IoT uh, and a car. You have a car over here. All right. So X30 is, uh, and uh, what do you have um, right here? You're talking about, what? Who are you? Yeah, so I'm are you talking about this car? Yeah, yeah. So actually we are focused on uh, mini mini wave technology here. So, uh, so uh, currently uh, what we are using is kind of a hierarchical uh, pin forming uh, technologies here. Right? Uh, uh, yeah. Because actually, as we can know that, right, the uh, pass is pretty, pretty, pretty high, right? So we, we have to do a pin forming at the minimum wave uh, frequencies, right? And the, the other thing is that um, we also have to do the beam tracking, right? So what we're using that, we want to use a hierarchical uh, beam forming a, uh, technology, right? So first of all, we use a uh, cross beam here that roughly identify the direction of the mobile device, right? And then we can use narrow beam and five beams, right, to maintain this signal quality, yeah? Right. Yeah. So basically, uh, to realize uh, this kind of technology, so I think uh, it is very di difficult because uh, we, we have to maintain right, the beam patterns. Right. So actually, um, Vinyatech uh, proposed a, uh, I mean, the design right, a lot of uh, base array calibration methods right, to maintain right, the beam shape. Uh -huh. yeah. So now we can uh, let the car move. Right. So you, you can see uh, the performance of the, of the beam tracking. So that means it's going to be a part of 5G, maybe? Yeah, you're you, right. You want yeah. to make it part of 5G. This uh -huh. Yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're right. So right now, what you are seeing is the 5G, right? It's, it's the 5G. What is it? 28 right. gigahertz. Huh? It says 28 gigahertz, right? Yes. Is yeah. that part of 5G? Yeah. So currently, uh, 25 is a um, discussed, right? Uh, most of the vendors. Okay. So uh, we focus on 28 gigahertz first, but actually our company also focus on 39, 15 gig. Right, because actually uh, this uh, minimum minimum wave frequencies, right, are more uh, popular, popular. Okay, so uh, what you are seeing um, currently, this kind of concept is already um, agreed, right, in the previous standard. Right, so actually have high potential to be a uh, future spec. Yeah. And you say a special thanks to Corvo. Right, what did they do? So currently, uh, we use their phase shifter. Phase shifter, yeah, because okay. uh, we have to do a uh, beam forming, right? And we have to adjust right, the phase of each antenna, right? And the phase array, uh, I mean, the phase shifter is coming from uh, Google. And what is a 5G smart link? I think a 5G a smart link um, is a pretty um, simple concept. So basically, uh, if we are using 5G millimeter wave, right? So basically, um, it will be blocking frequently, right? So if it is bracket, so basically uh, the data rate would drop very quickly, okay? So if we can have the link with 4G LTE, right? So then we um, then we can switch back to the LTE network, right? If 5G is bracket, right? This way, right, we can maintain uh, the data rate, okay? If 5G only, right, it's bracket, I mean 5G minimum wave, right, it's bracket, then the, the data, data rate drop. If 5G plus 4G, Right, then we can switch back and forth, then we can maintain signal, signal quality. Cool. Yeah. So is 5G going to be part of the X30 or is later? It's not inside X30, right? X30 is still a 4G, 4.5G. Uh, the X30 is LTE. Mm -hmm. but this is how soon in the future? Mm -hmm. 5G. 
So, uh, based on my standing, right, because I'm not the, uh, I am, yeah, I'm just saying, uh, en en what do you engineer. Do? So, I'm an en en engineer. For 5G? Yes, uh -huh, yes, uh, for 5G. So, actually, maybe mini meter wave will come after 2021. 2021? Right? Yes. So, it's a few years more. Yeah, exactly. But for the sub 6 gigahertz, maybe it will come coming soon. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah so that is my understanding. Cool. And uh, all this stuff for the. Uh, Yes, this IoT. Hello, sir. Hey, hi. How can I help you? Hello. So, um, so who are you? What are you, are you? You talk about the IoT here, the media tech booth. So, sorry, wait, wait. ArmDevices.net. Uh, what are you doing? I'm uh, just doing a video to show some of the latest. I can see here it says uh, MT2503. Yes. That's a I Cortex can... M3. Yes. No, I, no, this is based on ARM7. ARM7? Yes. Um, and, uh, the, the 2523. So that's a uh, Cortex M4. M4 yes. uh, is that a new one? Uh, yeah, this is this is pretty pretty new. This is from uh, from last year. End of right. last year. This is the 2523, the 7687, and the uh, 2500. And many many devices ship with those solutions already. Yes, we have customers already shipping. Right. And uh, 2601. That's uh, That's Android based. Android Wear. Based. That's the Android, Android Wear yeah, solution. Yes, it's, uh, more that's a Cortex A7, right? Or A7, yes. Yeah. Rich application, yes. Is there a follow-up on the 26, is there a 2602? No, this is only 2601, there is 2601. no 2602. And what is the MT3333? Uh, it's, uh, it's a GPS, Genesis solution. So it, it comprises of both, both uh, GPS, uh, Baidu, okay. and GLONASS. This one. And that's in the smart watch? Yes, this smart is using yeah. that particular Is that a Cortex uh, M? No, this is from our customer. Is it, but is it, this a no. Cortex A or Cortex M? No, it's, it's also based on A7, ARM7. All right. So there's a lot of uh, development in the IoT space for MediaTek. Yes, uh, absolutely. absolutely. And uh, focusing on many different things. Like, uh, uh, did you already announce your Cortex M33 license for the future, right? But uh, is the security, uh, software support, all your platforms, right. development kits, everything. Yes, we do, we do have the happening in the sense that, especially on the IoT side, yes. Okay.